Phone 7, this is the Sony Xperia XZ and I am comparing both for you today. Unboxed both of these, did live unboxings for them both separately. The Xperia XZ one went pretty sweet. The, X, uh, the iPhone one was a bit sucky because it was a bit long-winded and the setup process of an iPhone is crazy convoluted. So that isn't listed anymore, but you can check out our setup video on the iPhone 7 and we will be making many more. Let us know what you want to see in the comment section below. Back to the comparison. Flagship, flagship, smaller of the two flagships at the moment though. The iPhone 7 Plus is on its way to us, but in the meantime, these two stack up pretty comparably. 5.2 inches of display versus 4.7. Full HD resolution versus a weird resolution, 750 by 1334, resulting in about 326 pixels per inch. That means the Xperia XZ is the sharper of the two. Full HD means 424 pixels per inch or thereabouts. You've also got front firing stereo speakers, IP68 water resistance versus um, IP67, so slightly more hardy to the elements, but both will be able to take a couple of splashes, a first for iPhones. Around the back, you can also see you've got the cameras, 23 megapixels versus 12 megapixels. What you also have is a camera bump. So bringing the iPhone closer into frame, Apple hasn't been able to shave that off, which might irk some people when it comes to design, but they say it's gonna be worth it because the optics of the new iPhone camera are pretty stupendous. I've taken some samples across both and I will dive into them a little bit later. What do you think of the design? Which do you prefer? Um, I have big hands. I quite like how curvaceous the sides of the Sony Xperia XZ are. It's new design language, the flat base, the alkali metal body all looks and feels sweet super bezel heavy up top and bottom and so is the iPhone so there's nothing really in it in that respect the iPhone is just a more curvaceous more elegant device um, in terms of it'll be better for smaller hands in particular as far as key ports go lightning connector down at the base and that obviously replaces the headphone jack not just re like replaces but there is no headphone jack um, the USB type C is at the base of the Xperia XZ whereas you've got the headphone jack up at the top as you can see right hand side you've got a fingerprint scanner slash power button you've got volume and uh, buttons and a physical camera key while to the left hand side is where you've got the sim card slot and micro sd card slot for expandable storage 32 gigabytes on board storage on this thing now onto the iphone and you've got power button on the right hand side left hand side you've got all the other buttons and a toggle up the top nothing of note whatsoever and like we said around the back we've already seen that camera so I really, really like the additional memory that Apple is giving you. You can pick it up in 32 gigabytes. 32 gigabytes, so will be too little, guys. <clears throat> Opt for the one to eight gigabyte one. Um, otherwise, you will probably fill your phone up in no time flat. I've filled up my Sony pretty much after around under 24 hours with it, which is pretty crazy stuff. Thank goodness for that micro SD card slot. They run different operating systems inside. They have Android and iOS. iOS on the iPhone. It's iOS 10, so it is the latest version. You can see to the left hand side you have a kind of um, Google Now type experience. Uh, to the left hand side of both devices in fact you have a Google Now type experience. Pull down from the top you've got a notification shade. You can uh, swipe notifications out of the way on both devices. So there are a lot more overlaps than there have ever been between Android and iOS before. But iOS still maintains that quick toggle element at the base whereas Android has all your quick toggles at the top. There's another interesting point of note. The home button on the iPhone 7 isn't a physical clicky click button anymore. Oh no, it is in fact a haptic feedback button, which I have still not gone to grips with. I've, as you can see, set up this phone. I've thrown a whole load of my applications on here, but um, so far I'm kind of missing my click feedback physical button. And you do indeed have a physical button on the Sony Xperia XZ. As you can see, another nice element, the XZ does give you the option of the UI being landscape or portrait in the home screen. So that's what's inside the screen, but what about the screen itself? Well, they're both IPS panels um, and they both look really, really good. Um, in terms of sharpness, we've already said that the Xperia XZ wins. Um, haven't done color tests, but from the off, looking at it, I'd say the Xperia XZ has a slightly redder hue, whereas the iPhone has a slightly more yellow hue. Um, iPhones have historically 
also um, had a bit of a yellow hue out of the box that then apparently sunlight fixes and I'm definitely getting that a tiny bit on this iPhone 7. Now let's talk about those cameras. You've got a 7 megapixel camera at the front of the iPhone 7 versus a 12 megapixel around the back um, and this can shoot 4K video as too can the Xperia XZ. Xperia XZ has a 13 megapixel front camera versus a um, 23 megapixel uh, rear camera. Now one thing that I'm really bummed about already the Xperia XZ has already given me a I'm getting too hot to carry on shooting a warning. So Sony's cameras in the past have gotten have overheated a little bit and I found when I was charging my Xperia Z yesterday it stopped me from recording uh, video and taking photos because it was getting too hot. Clearly this 23 megapixel sensor is an absolute beast on this thing and puts too much pressure on it and gets too hot. Um, that's all I'm saying. Maybe next time Sony revise your sensor because I like taking pictures and it wasn't even that hot last night. If you're living in a hot country that would probably exacerbate that. Um, that even does happen with a front camera as well which is a shame but the picture quality on the Sony is exceptional. If you haven't seen our Instagram already, make sure you check it out and you can go through there, check out a light trail um, that we recorded on the Xperia XZ last night. Um, it's a one second exposure, maximum exposure. Out of the box therefore, the user interface of the Xperia XZ wins out for me just based on the fact that you do indeed have manual camera controls, whereas you don't have that on the iPhone. With the iPhone, you have to purchase applications that enable that separately, um, which is a bit of a bummer, um, but it does support manual camera modes. And if you do shoot in something like Lightroom application, you can also shoot RAW as well which I haven't managed to get working on the Sony Xperia XZ. So horses for courses people. As for pure picture quality, let's whack open those cameras. This is preliminary stuff guys, uh, but I did take some pictures of the same thing. Um, and on the Sony I did one in 8 megapixel automatic mode and one in 23 megapixel. I overrided the 8 megapixel. Overrided? Overrode? I don't know. Um, and as you can see, I literally tapped on that Canon symbol there. Um, so this is the 8 megapixel version and unfortunately the iPhone, for Sony that is, the iPhone is way, way, way better in that specific instance. I can actually read the text here whereas that it hasn't really discerned anything between the blues and the um, writing. Bringing it into frame you can also see that the uh, coloration on the iPhone is more accurate as well. What you can also see, so that's the 8 megapixel version, is in the 23 megapixel version. While the detail is a little bit better, the actual coloration isn't. And so ultimately from that one photo, the iPhone wins out. Moving over to some low light stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Um, -bum -bum, there you go, other way. Um, did a low light sample picture of um, these plants and the Xperia XZ um, clearly does a um, more aggressive job of brightening everything up. So pinch in on the same element and you can see the exposure is heaps higher on the Xperia XZ um, which is actually again less realistic and the iPhone's exposure is more on point and on top of that detail is better though that is 12 megapixels and I only took an 8 megapixel one of those. So while the Xperia XZ is impressing me no end with its manual features and the digital image stabilization looks great on video which I will communicate a little bit later, you have to really really take these two pictures at face value and that is saying that the iPhone 7 is a better camera phone um, with those two conditions. Moving on and we can talk about speakers now and I'm going to open Spotify and what's awesome about Spotify is that it doesn't let you um, share your account and that wouldn't be awesome normally but it's awesome in this instance because if I want to play the song I can flip straight over to that one. Now I've got the microphone clipped to me so you can hear me. This is kind of a secondary a consideration having a um, like speaker comparison. So I'll do a separate video where I use a better microphone but what I'm going to do now is going to just measure the audio levels. We've got dual speakers on both of these devices so it should give you some nice, something nice and comprehensive and two very very competitive similarly spec speakers. So the iPhone capping at around 60. 
and the Xperia XZ capping at around 55 and just to illustrate these are at maximum volume so that shows that the iPhone is also louder. As far as the quality goes, the iPhone seems a tiny bit tinnier, but not much. Um, I actually really, really was impressed by the sound of the iPhone. So what Apple has clearly done is pump this little guy full of sound. Um, I'm really, really curious to see whether or not the iPhone 6, uh, sorry, 7 Plus is going to sound better than that. But ultimately, that has been a mammoth comparison between these two because I've jumped in quite deep diving to speakers and the camera. And that really leaves very little else aside from just reeling off the rest of the specs. 3 gig of RAM versus 2 gig of RAM, a Snapdragon 820 under the hood um, versus a A10 Fusion uh, processor from Apple and quad core versus octa core um, and the batteries are different capacities you've got around a thousand more milliamps in the xperia xz versus the iphone 7 but the iphone 7 has a good few more milliamps than its predecessor so hopefully will last you guys a day i got the xperia xz out of um, charge this morning at around 5 15 5 30 a.m um, and it was kind of at like 40 30 percent battery by um, about 1 p.m um, I was using it quite heavily though, so that's not representative. That shouldn't give you an overview of how it would react in the real world. I'm obviously reviewing it at the moment. I'd anticipate I could get a comfortable day out of the Xperia Z based on my usage thus far and screen on time. Um, but watch this space. I'll be reviewing the Xperia XZ, I'll be reviewing the iPhone 7, um, and I'll be able to talk about stuff more affirmatively. But if you've got any questions about anything that I have or haven't covered, fire them in the comments section below. Obviously, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button like the channel subscribe it's how you're going to stay on top of everything that we do here at btech and when you subscribe it helps us out massively